Hey, what's up everybody? Chad here from Grayscale Gorilla. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use our Align plugin in Grayscale Gorilla Plus to take a messy bookshelf like this and quickly turn it into something a little bit more organized like this. All right, let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Cinema. Before we jump into the, the ins and outs and the, and the features of the plugin, I wanna talk a little bit about the theory behind it. So if you've ever used uh, Photoshop or Illustrator, then you're pretty familiar already with some of the Align tools that they have. And a lot of that same functionality is here, only now it's in 3D. So let's jump into the Grayscale Gorilla menu and find Align tools and peel this off. And you can see even the icons sort of are similar to those Align tools that, that you would see in those 2D programs. And that's really on purpose because a lot of times I'm reaching for, I want to have something like this in 3D, but something like this didn't exist, hence that's why we built it. But let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the theory behind it. So imagine in Illustrator, you have a line left, right, top, bottom, center, and it makes a lot of sense because you're in 2D, you only have two directions to worry about. But when you're in 3D and you're looking at different views, it's a little bit different. So depending on the view, that's going to change how this tool kind of works. But one thing to keep in mind is the orthographic views, the align left, top, right, bottom, and all that is going to be the same in each view. You just need to remember that. So if, for instance, if I'm in the top view like this and I'm going to align something, I'm just bringing up a marking menu here. Left is going to be here. Top is going to be here. Right is here. Bottom here. Center here. So it's completely like dependent. It's like you're taking that orthographic view and making that your Illustrator canvas. If you think about it like that, I think it's really helpful. And the front view, same thing. Like the bottom is actually down here. So it's, you just have to like, you know, switch your brain to the orthographic view that you're in and think about which align makes sense. Also, it's contextual. So if we're in a, in a perspective view, the tool's going to change and kind of gray out things that, that you can't use in that view. Let's jump into some of the particulars of the align tool. Okay, so we have our messy books here, and we're going to align these up and get them looking nice and neat. A couple things to remember. Align is going to work. It's going to align itself to the bounding box of the last selected object. And if you hold down control while you hit one of these align buttons, it's, gonna, it's not going to use the bounding box. It's actually going to use the axes of that object. So it's really important to understand which one is going to make the most sense for you in which view you're in. So if we go into perspective view, and we want to clean up these books. If we hold down, if we hit align Z, which is going to move them all back into place in, in Z. And then if we hit align Y, we're going to notice that they're all, they're all aligned, but they're all centered. They're all centered by that bounding. They're aligned by that bounding box there. So that's really not what we want. We don't want these books to uh, be kind of jutting out like this. It looks kind of messy. We want them all to be aligned by the spine. So let's go ahead and undo that. We're going to jump back into our perspective view and we're going to hide those those bookshelves that we accidentally unhid and we're going to use a, the control button so we're going to hit control while we hit align z and that's going to align them to the axes of our last selected object and then we'll do the same thing control align y and now we have our bookshelf looking good there but remember because we did the axes it's going to they're all aligned by the axes but those spines aren't in the right they're not lined up correctly so really what i want to do is jump into a top view hit control and do a line bottom there and that's going to be by by the bounding box and give us that nice flat edge of bindings right there so that's that's kind of like in a nutshell you really want to make sure that you're aware of what view you're in and what what sort of uh, uh if you want to be in the bounding box mode or the axis mode that's really important to kind of understand how those work so i i suggest just playing around with them and seeing what works and uh, once you kind of understand it, you'll know which one to hit. All right, next, let's talk a little bit more about the distribute functions. Okay, so let's take a look at the distribute functions in a line. I've got a neon letter set here, set, spells out Grayscale Gorilla. Actually, if you're a Plus member, you have access to this neon letter set as well. It's a lot of fun to play around with. It's kind of a perfect example for using the distribute functions in a line. So before I get started, let's go ahead and align all these letters to the right place. I'm actually just going to do this in three clicks uh, on the UI here. We're going to align and distribute evenly all these letters. So let's just grab those. We're going to go into the top view and we're going to say align to bottom. We'll go into the front view, align to bottom, and then we'll just hit distribute horizontally. And there we go. Three clicks and we're done. And that's 
kind of it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, let's see how this works. So the way distribute works is it's going to look at the far left and the far right and or the top and the bottom, and it's going dis to distribute via the bounding box evenly in between those two points. So what I mean by that is if I move the letter A all the way over here, let's say we want to have a little bit more space in between these letters. Now if I grab those letters and I hit distribute horizontally, it's going to space them out like that. The same would go for vertical if we lined all of these up to X and then maybe we take the top letter and put it way up here and we grab all these letter sets and we say distribute vertically, we're going to get that same style. This time it's kind of going up into the air like maybe a, a vertical sign. All right, so in the perspective view, it acts pretty much the same way. Only now you have to use the distribute X, Y, and Z because we're not in an orthographic view it's going to force us to use these axes. So let's go ahead and see how that works. Let's grab all those and say distribute X, and it's going to immediately space them out evenly via the bounding box. The same function would happen if we align them all to X and then took the top G and maybe moved it way, 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 way up in the air. Actually, let's put it way up here. And we say the same thing again. We want to distribute on Y. We get that same effect that we did in the orthographic view. Now, what's interesting about this function is that we can work in local or world space. Everything that I've been doing up until now has been in world space. But if we want to do it in local space, meaning let's say that this this neon sign is in a in a in a null, and this null is maybe, I don't know, rotated in a weird way. So you're thinking, well, wouldn't that screw up our line? How would we be able to distribute this? Well, it's it's very simple. You can distribute in uh, local space just by holding down control when you hit your distribute X, Y, and Z. So let's grab all these letters again, grab the G over here, all the way to the A. While I'm kind of like hitting this button over here, I'm gonna hold down control. So hold down control, and we get that localized version of that distribute. Otherwise, if we did that and we hit it without it, it would kind of like take it off. It would skew it a little bit. So that's just kind of a nice function there, a nice feature that you can add have right there for doing local stuff. Distribute doesn't necessarily work off of the order of your selection, nor does it require you to have your objects in a specific order in your object manager. It's spatially aware, so it's looking at the object's bounding box and looking at the next object that's closest to it. So you can have your letters all kind of out of whack here in the object manager, and you can select them in sort of random ways and, oh, well, here, that's fine, I'll just do this. And you can still hit distribute horizontally here, and it'll still work. So just so you're aware, this, this order and everything does not matter when it comes to the distribute. Yeah, so that's pretty much how the distribute functions work in a line. And that about wraps up everything that I wanted to show you guys. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you want to learn more, head over to grayscalegorilla.com. We've got documentation and a little bit more information on a line. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.